Any questions? <laughs> All right, so this has happened. I saw this image. Um, these are Fedora container image sizes from Fedora 22 up until Fedora 30, and it went from like 200 megabytes to th over 300 megabytes. And there's a dip in here that was some sort of minimization effort, and it just like grew again. And okay, so that, that just appeared, and the question was, hey, can you make Fedora smaller, please? And I was like, sure. So I just grabbed Fedora, that's me, and tried to make it smaller. And then I realized, no, that's, that's, that's not the way. I just need to have a more sophisticated approach. Um, so I proposed something that's called Fedora Objective. I don't know how people are familiar with Fedora <coughs> Objectives, but um, these are like high-level strategy goals for the project. Fedora has like, I don't know, four. So I propose minimization to be one of those. And I basically say, hey, I want to minimize things. I don't really know what I'm doing. And I'll figure it out, and I'll let you know what happens. I call it the discovery phase. Um, and it got accepted. And let's talk about the discovery phase, what it was and what I came, came, came up with. So they mentioned images, right? Um, do we actually need them smaller? Um, so if I look at base images and applications, right? No one really runs a base image just for base image. People are on applications. So we might not need to focus on the base image itself, but on the whole thing. And also, you have application with dependencies. And if some of the dependencies are in the base image, it might actually just move the line and really increase anything. It might, it might not. Um, there's cases in which in bigger base images are actually better. If you, for example, have containers on huge scale, the base image gets shared because it's a layer. And in, 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 like, in the result, it might be even smaller. So, so what I took from it is like, I'll focus on the whole thing, not just the base image. Um, so why do we care about size? Um, isn't disk space cheap? Um, that's a good question. And I think there are three reasons why I care about size. Um, compulsory security slide. Um, less things installed, smaller attack surface. Um, that's a reason that's not storage related at all, it's a valid reason. Um, another one, Internet of Things. Again, that's cool, it, one more slide. Um, it's not about disk space again, like Raspberry Pis and things are maybe small, but it's really about the connection speeds because they run not in the data center, but they often run somewhere, even in the fields, have very slow connections and sending updates quickly um, requires. If, if things are smaller, it actually helps, right? And then, yeah, containers, I mentioned containers on scale. Like, if we have just too many containers and it's too big, it's actually painful to manage. So, like, making it smaller actually makes sense, even from the storage perspective. So, all right. Those are the three things I took in mind. Um, that's why I care about size. All right. Um, even more existential question, like, what's the point of Linux distros? Is even for the right place to do it? Um, so... How does it work? Like we have upstreams, they develop software, they develop nice features, and we have users who use it in production, and they need fixes fast. And then they have a bug, and maybe are pressuring the upstream, hey, you need to fix our CVE, but we don't have time because we actually need to develop things and stuff like that. So that's where distro comes in. And they can integrate things, they can test things, they can up make it easily consumable and update it, and basically make everyone's life better so they can focus on development, they can focus on running, and like they are the gateways between those two. And you can have various distros with various target groups. You can have community distros like Fedora. You can have an enterprise distro like Red Hat, and then you can actually throw money at them and scream louder, and it will do it faster. Um, so that's why we care about distros. So OK, so Fedora's the right place again. Um, so let's finally minimize things, how to do that. Um, let's have a look at Fedora. Oops. Um, that's the repos. It's an SVG file that just somehow tries to show you all the packages and all the dependencies everywhere. And this is live from my last presentation. Um, this file took three hours to generate. It's 1.6 million lines SVG, 130 megabytes. Um, so like. Even for computers, this is kind of hard to approach. And I was like, nope, I'm just not minimizing this. I need to have a different approach. So let's focus on use cases instead. People don't 
use repos for anything, right? They have use cases. They install something very specific for a specific reason, and that's what they care about. So can we maybe name a few and focus on them? So that's the thing that we do. And what we make with them, basically there are four areas in the project that we'll be focusing on. So making that's making smaller, minimization, right? Can we optimize things in various ways? As we saw on the graph, things tend to grow, so we need to also keep them smaller over time. So if you make change, it actually persists. Talking is about um, making this initiative more popular, learning, uh, teaching other people, guiding, whatever, educating, and leading is about coordination in the, pro in, in the project so we don't actually step on each other's toes. So that's what the minimization effort is actually doing in there. And with that, I proposed the second phase that was much more specific than I don't know. Um, and this is what's going on right now. By the way, in the meantime, very nice thing happened. Um, the size has got smaller with the base image. Um, you can see F30 and F31. Actually, F31 got below 200 megabytes, um, which is like even slightly smaller than the F22. And thanks for the, to the container team in Fedora for doing this. Um, this happened just, I think, because the objective was in there. We, we talked about it, and they're just awesome people. So now we have to keep it small. We can't just let it grow again. So step one, how, how would we actually approach those things? So back to the objective. Uh, I said we define use cases. Um, we have a few, like HTTPD server. We have MariaDB, Postgres. And we're always looking for more that are relevant that we can, that we can take care of. Um, and then step two is prevent growth. We do that before actually minimizing it. So like, if you do some work on that, it doesn't creep back. And this is the area where most work happened so far. And I have a demo for that. Um, it's about a service that will monitor things. And I'll just show you. If you just open this URL, um, this is where the service is. Um, I'm quite happy about the URL. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so if you go there, you see something called feedback pipeline. And it says that it's reporting a notification regarding dependencies and sizes of defined Ampereum installations. OK, so what that means, let's have a look. Um, so I just click here on the result. And there's these dependency reports. And I can see two major things here. Um, there's use cases and there's base images. And basically, use cases are the applications that we care about. And base images are where we install them, like in the context, because they can run in many different places. So let's, for example, look at the HTTPD. And it's monitoring things for, for the size. So I have some history graphs. And there's actually three of the same color. It's a prototype. I'm sorry. but. Yeah, this is like from end of September last year, and it's been flat, which like is sort of good news because it didn't grow up, but like there's an opportunity, of course, to do some work. Um, I don't have the old data before I showed when it went up, so like there's not actually anything shown from the minimization, but that's what we have, and then we can work on notifications and things if, 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 if that grows. Um, where this data comes from? So. If I go a little bit down, there is a definition, and that's how I define the use case. So I can say packages, HTTPD, install options. I have no weak dependencies, no docs. And where it's installed, it's installed in three different contexts. And that's where I can monitor. And we can look at some package lists. And this is the full report of what's in there. And this is not like the history, but this is actually where we are right now. Um, and there's many things visible. So there's HTTPD, which is the package that's required. And then there's all the dependencies. And some of them are in the base image. These are the green ones. And can you see something interesting in there? So I took a Fedora container base image that has like 200 megabytes, installed HTTPD, and it has 243. And then I took empty space where there was nothing in there installed the same thing, and it's 379. So that's like 120 megs more. Who, who knows why? Yeah. I cheated there, you told me yesterday. 
All right. <laughs> so the other Stephen. We blacklist the whole content We blacklist content. That's sort of true. Um, and it's also weak dependency management. Uh, it's not weak dependencies. It's basically choices in the repo. So if I, in, in this case, in this case, so if I saw the packages by size, I can see in the middle there's glibc old LAN packs. It's like 200 megs just got in, but it's not in there. Why it's not in there? Because if I sort it by size again, but the other way around, I can see this glibc minimal LAN pack that's zero, basically cutting some support for like languages, but it prevents the one from coming in. So the message from this is that having the base images or the environments is worth it for those choices. Because you can make specific choices that make it then more useful for, for users. Um, and the last one is basically only that she lives in minimal line pack and nothing else. And that's the smallest one because that's as low as we could get. All right. It also does dependency graphs. And this is for like, inspection. If I see, hey, this is too big, or why is it in there, I can just show like the relations. There's this container-based image squashed into one node. I can expand it by going to the other graph. And I can actually even click on packages if I want to see the relations. So I can click on systemd and see what requires it, or why is it there. Um, and it's just some basic clustering. So that was useful. For example, there was a um, MariaDB use case, and there was like a bunch of Perl in one of those clusters, and it was actually easy to trace like why is in there. So that can be used uh, that way. All right, I showed the base images as well. Um, it'll be very similar like those, but again, go to results, click on base images, and I have four here. We saw those three empty container base and minimal length pack. I also have IoT, that's just for tracking for the IoT initiative. Um, we don't install anything on IoT because the run things in container. That doesn't matter, but it's there. Um, and the definition of, for example, the container base is the same. It has the graph here, so I can see it's mostly flat, maybe a tiny bit down, but not much. Not growing, though. That's great. And required packages, install options, and the full package list here and the size. And I can also show you the minimal length pack, which is just a thing I've made up, um, only actually requiring the glibc minimal length pack and nothing else. It's got some dependencies. It's 35 megabytes. There's no any package manager. So if you want to use it, you need to use multi-stage builds. I don't know if you're familiar with that. If you don't, we can talk later. There's nothing in the scope here. But this can be used to build even smaller images. So that's feedback pipeline right now. Um, it only shows things, so you need to go there to look for things. Um, I want to make it more reactive, so it actually notifies if there is a change in something. And that will be useful, for example, if a packager makes a change and they don't see it in their context, but it somehow influences something on like the other side, so they can get a ping, hey, you caused this. Please evaluate and do things about it. So that's the URL again. Um, you can go have a look. and. All right, let, let's back to the, to the uh, objective. So I said, define use cases, prevent growth, and then we can actually minimize those. And this is actually, we, we already did something in there, but this will be the main area right now. We'll be restarting some of the discussions and what we're basically looking for. Um, unnecessary RPM dependencies. This will, there will be not many of those, maybe not at all. But it's something to look at, easy wins. If there's something forgotten, whatever, we can take care of that. Um, multiple implementations of the same functionality, that happens like multiple cryptos and things. So this is more systematic approach to just like looking for those occurrences and maybe choosing one. So that's a problem that we're looking for. And that I call it context-specific requirements. That sounds horrible. But for example, it's completely fine for packages to rely on systemd because it's on every system except containers, you don't really need it in containers, so just like in different contexts you have different requirements and there's many packages requiring systemd for creating users, which is a great way to create users, but like it 
it, it, it gets many things into a container, so we might want to think about that. Um, what we actually did was separating, or discussing separating the systemd sysusers thing out, so it doesn't pull everything, but that's in progress. Um, and then there's this classic case, like requiring massive things for a tiny fraction. It's like you have a tiny script that you want to run, and you require the whole Perl stack for that. Um, so those cases we're looking for as well. Um, and I have a few things. How in Genjuri upstream developers, of course, we're not doing this in isolation in Fedora. Some things are just packaging, some things are software changes, so we're looking at both. Um, also, implementing process and policy changes. For example, if we figure out a better approach for users in containers, so there's no system D, um, we can make a policy in the project um, so it's easier followed. Um, and then providing guidance, of course. Like, there will be many things that we realize, discover, and we can teach people how to make decisions. Um, so how can you help? Um, last three slides. If you're packagers, this is just about the minimization mindset. Like, just think about it. If you add a dependency, it can have a huge impact on many things, containers, floodbacks, ISOs, or even just those installations that we don't even ship as an artifact and that we don't even see it, but what, what people install. Um, so that's how you can help. If you're developers, you can help improve the feedback pipeline, or just we can talk about other things, how we can make it easier for everyone. And if you're Linux distro gurus, you tell me because you're much smarter than I am. Um, I'm, no, no, in all seriousness, I'm happy to have all various discussions um, if you have ideas. Um, let me close with this and lots of questions. This is not about like cutting features off from Fedora. It's about being more flexible. So you have less installed on the system, but like you, you can choose things in there. Um, let's do it all again. Thank you. Um, that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that application you did a demo on uh, was supposed to, it was going to be capable of doing notifications. What I would personally like to see in the distro is uh, the, the example you gave of you know, pulling something for a, for a single script and it pulls in the entire flow stack. I would really like to have that you know thresholds we can say that you know if between build you know build. Uh, three and build four of this package, uh, the dependency tree grew mm -hmm. by a certain margin. I would like to, uh, I think that should be flagged for not just the uh, maintainers, but mm -hmm. ideally anyone downstream of that package too. Yes, I agree. I just repeat for the recording. Um, uh, yeah. Stephen proposes that um, Fury Pipeline should have some thresholds, for example, for certain growth and have notifications so we can actually see like differences between builds. That's exactly what I'm planning there. It's a little bit tricky in the sense that there's nothing to query this data for. Like, if I only care about single packages, I can ask about the build and that's easy to figure out, but here I wouldn't have to do an actual compose of the whole repo for every build of every package, like in theory, to get this data. So we'll need to figure out something I see Alexandra is looking at me, we'll be figuring this out very soon. Um, not for every build, but like, yeah, very often so we can do those things. And that's a very good point and it's definitely planned. Um, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the note was that we can actually add this feedback to the package update, I think both here in Fedora. So if as a packager you're submitting an update, you can see, hey, you, you caused this, are you sure? And if you're sure, like, you can proceed, but if, if that wasn't intentional, you can just you know, revert and do, try again. <laughs> yep. So, two things. Uh, do you have any support from RPM? Like, do you want to install on the subset of the package? Like, you want to throw out the message, documentation? Or you want from packages to build uh, separate packages, and one packages, separate packages, documentation, mm -hmm. and so on. And the other. Let's do the one and then we can yeah, do that. Okay. So the question was if I intend to <clears throat> be able to somehow install just parts of packages, like we have leave out documentation, leave out man pages, or if I want to break these things into separate packages, 
I would say I don't really have a preference. I just want it to be possible for people to install maybe just what's relevant for them. However, we achieve that in the implementation. Like, I don't dictate implementation. I just want the result of being able to. Mm -hmm. So, yep. how do you want to squeeze this feature pool or base features? That's a very good point. Yeah, so the point was that people are adding new features into their packages because they're useful, but it grows the size and like, how am I going to approach this? So, like, that's one of the constraints. This is a binary distro, so like some of the configurations that you do before build, like for example, in Gentoo, you can do this very easily. In Fedora, we can't, but that's why I'm focusing on the use cases and not like on, I don't say like I focus on HTTPD as a whole. I want to focus on HTTPD in this very specific use case so I can actually know what it needs and what it doesn't need. And if we define many of those use cases, then the project can say, hey, these use cases are the most relevant for us, um, so we need to prioritize those. Or we can say, hey, there's these huge groups of people using this same thing in very different ways. Can we build it twice and make both smaller or something like that? Like there's ways how to approach it. But yeah, we need to keep in mind that like adding new features is nice, but it has impact. So there's a balance. It's a balancing act. I guess I have time for one last question. Um, all right, two questions, very quick. Uh, just curious, do you have any data on how much of the bloat we're tying is dependency growth versus just the natural growth in so if I have data, if it's just like dependency growth or, not, or individual packages, I don't know right now. I don't have, well, I, I collect the data, so I could, I could visualize it somehow. But there's a service, it's developed by David Cantrell, that's focusing only on the packages. And because it's just the packages without dependencies, it's much easier to access the data right from the builds to get fresher results, and he focuses on so file and things. So we already talked, and it'll be part of that. Um, yeah. Uh, how are you collecting the data and how often and from where? How am I collecting data, how often and from where? So there's nothing to query for those use cases. I have to do that. And because I implemented that and I'm not that smart, I install everything and then query. And it takes like four hours and I do it every day. Um, I need someone to fix it maybe, if there's even a way. Like my motivation was to do it as fast as possible because that's a prototype. So I expect to throw loads of code away. And I also don't want to introduce errors by re-implementing, I don't know, dependency, whatever. So like that was the easiest way, but it's a prototype and from we can definitely. So I just install it from the federal repos oh, okay. on the box, query, pro away. That's how I get my create results. All right. I guess that was everything. Sorry, we can talk. <laughs> okay.